So now let's look at the implications for, for um, porosity modification. Let's say we have an aragonite ooid. Remember, aragonite is unstable. So we put meteoric water on this aragonite, the ooid. And now let's imagine one case where we have a high flux of water or we have a water that is strongly undersaturated under with respect to aragonite, which means it would have a tendency to dissolve aragonite very easily. What will happen is we will dissolve the aragonite, we'll be left with a moldic porosity, and because we are very undersaturated with respect to aragonite and or we have a high flow of water, the calcium carbonate will be in solution and transported away from the site of dissolution. So we will have precipitation of a new phase much further downflow from the site of dissolution. So that means at the site of dissolution, we create an enhanced porosity. Of course, everything is a mass balance. So further down, maybe a few hundreds of meters or maybe a few kilometers or tens of kilometers. It depends on the system. Further down, we'll have precipitation of a, of a calcite mineral. And of course, the cement will reduce porosity further down the flow. But at the site of this solution, we improve the porosity and probably the permeability as well of this system. So that's how you create moldic porosity or moldic porosity that we saw in Gawar, for instance. Now, if we take a counter example with a low flow of water, a low flux of water and uh, a solution that is either saturated or very slightly undersaturated with respect to aragonite. Well, yes, we dissolve the, the uh, aragonite of the oid, no problem, but we immediately re precipitate a secondary calcite within the oid. So we have a recrystallization in the sense that we lose the texture of the oid, but we preserve its shape and it's clearly recrystallized. But this, the calcium carbonate is retained close to the site of dissolution which means we have no precipitation of calcite downflow. So these two, uh, these two examples show you how much kinetics are important and how much flow is important in explaining whether or not we will preserve porosity during meteoric dissolution. So let's look at a concrete example. This is the Smackover Formation in the Jurassic. This uh, Smackover Formation is an important reservoir in the southern uh, U.S. states. Now, in the Smackover Formation during the HST, classic HST situation, we had prograding clinoforms, and it, the, the Smackover is effectively a nuidal shelf, so lots of ooids were deposited. We had a lot of primary porosity that was intergranular porosity in grainstone. But now comes the low stand during the Jurassic sequence three. And during the low stand, we have a, a, an LST clastic fan, but also we have meteoric diagenesis happening at the exposed surface of the, uh, the smackover formation. So that means we dissolve aragonite, we precipitate cement of calcite, and we create an O-moldic porosity where the porosity is effectively inverted. Now the calcite is in the original intergranular porosity and the molds of oids, so the oil molds, represent the, uh, the new porosity. Now because of the calcite cementation, the permeability of the rock is effectively reduced even if the intergranular porosity is replaced by the oil moldic porosity. So not great for a reservoir at this stage. But this is not the end of the story and it's an important lesson in that diagenetic processes can interplay with each other. So after this meteoric diagenetic trend that reduces permeability but improves O-moldic porosity, we have the next sea level rise. And what happens then is that we have the formation of a barrier through the formation of an oolidic um, shoal. So we find ourselves in that classic situation similar to what we saw in the Arab formation where we have increased evaporation on the lagoon, leading to the formation of saline dense brines that sink at the bottom of the lagoon and really dolomitize the limestone that was previously impacted by meteoric diagenesis. And it, it, is, it is this dolomitization step that improves connectivity 
between the different ormoldic pores thanks to the fact that the calcite cement that was in the intergranular space is now a dolomite with intercrystalline uh, porosity. So it's now connected. And it's not the only benefit of this step because as we have precipitation, or as we have dolomitization, we also have precipitation in the back of this lagoon of an evaporative cap that then prograts on top of the lagoon and effectively offers a seal to that reservoir. And if you look at these um, reservoir, this is how they look. This is the smack over formation in thin section. You see, you can still recognize a lot of O-moldic porosity, but you can also see the dolomite that now forms the envelope where we used to have the calcite cement. Some of the calcite can be sometimes preserved but it's, it's obvious that this rock has beautiful porosity in blue, but also is well connected thanks to the intercrystal porosity.